Hey, my name is Doug with Mastery Engine Center. Uh, I'm here to show you our uh, VT4000 generator. Uh, I'll go over a few details on this for your sales. First of all, when you buy the unit, it's going to come complete with the sound shield, as you see here. It's going to come complete with engine rails, bottom mount rails, uh, engine mounts, and there's also internal mounts, so there's dual sets of mounts. We plumb everything to the outside of the box, so your customer doesn't need to go inside to hook anything up. Uh, stainless steel exhaust coming out, out the back, your fittings for your fuel, everything you need is going to be externally located. When you look around the box, there are no ventilation in the box whatsoever. These are tight units. We want to keep them sealed. The, the tighter they are, the quieter they are. The only air that it needs is combustion air. There's a small hole underneath the box that allows combustion air to come up to the combustion chamber, obviously, to, to get your burn cycle. The unit is held together with these rubber bands. These are a uh, parts item. They're in the parts book. Um, we usually give extras when you buy a unit because sometimes they wind up in the bills. Um, they hold everything together, they're quiet, they won't rattle even after time. The unit comes with start-stop panel and it comes with about 50 foot of cable. This, this panel is going to tell you the uh, RPM of the engine, it's going to tell you the cycles, it also has a load indicator on it which is going to tell you how much power is being drawn out of the unit. Ultimately if you draw too much power on it, the panel is going to turn red It'll stay red for a little while, and the breaker will trip at that point. The, the breaker is rated for each unit based on the size and the output of the generator. Each unit comes with this breaker box. It's going to have the appropriate breaker uh, for the voltage and for the amperage rated of the generator. The, the unit comes with 40-inch cable. This is all ABYC approved. Uh, we don't want the customer to go into the electronics on the, on the generators because it just makes it complicated for him and it makes it easier to screw them up. Okay, so to take the cover off, you remove the, the bands and the cover just slips off. Some people say it's a tight area when you're trying to get the cover off, but these covers are made to roll over the top. Now this, this unit here on our 4K or our VT4000, it's rated at 3.2 continuous output. That's about 28 amps of power, continuous duty. Uh, most generator manufacturers rate theirs at intermittent. You have to look at the fine print. Uh, when you're buying a competitor's generator and see what their continuous output is and that's what you should base your sale on. So we sell this to cover a 30 amp breaker which are boats normally from uh, say 28 foot all the way up to about a 40 foot boat depending on the equipment they have on the boat. This is a Yanmar based generator. This, this engine is an air-cooled generator but it's rated and certified as a marine engine. All the EPA ratings and it's been ABYC tested for exhaust all our marine ratings. So what we do to, to make it a marine engine, we add an air to water heat exchanger. We have a water pump mounted on the back. It's a belt driven water pump. Uh, the water gets pulled in through this, the seawater gets pulled in, cools the alternator in the back. There's a water jacket on here, all stainless steel. Cools the windings on the alternator, goes through the air to water heat exchanger, and gets dumped into the stainless steel exhaust system. This heat exchanger, the fan is still on the engine because it is an air-cooled industrial engine. So the fan is on the engine, it pulls the air in, cools the air, runs it across the engine, cools the engine, and sucks the same air back in again. Again, cooling the air. It's continuous rotation. Cooling the air, heating the air up. Again, we, we allow extra air in for the combustion chamber only, but that's not for cooling air. That's getting burnt in the combustion chamber. We have applications where it's actually cooler inside the box than externally, depending on where the, the generator is located. The exhaust system is also rated for ABYC and Coast Guard certifications for ignition proof, so you can put this generator in a gas-powered boat. So the way we do that, we have to cool the exhaust. It has to be under 200 degrees centigrade. It's very important to, to meet that certification. So we do that by injecting the water low. It fills the tube up to the top. This compartment here is all full of water, and then it dumps it back into the exhaust system. Normal, normal conditions, you can put your hand on here while it's running, and you will not, you don't want to get burned. That has to happen for two reasons. First of all, to pass the test. Second of all, to keep it cool inside the box. If it gets too hot in the box, the engine's not going to run correctly. These generators are capacitor regulated. They're simple. There's no PC board regulation on these generators. So you have one capacitor regulating your, your voltage in and out. The voltage is going to be between 115 and 121, depending on, depending on how much power you're pulling out of the generator. This unit runs at 3,600 RPM. When they purchase the unit or, uh, and put it in the boat, it's going to run at 3,750. 
and you may get a customer to call you and say, hey, my engine's running fast. But as soon as a load is put on the unit, it's gonna drop down to about 3650, which is about 61 cycles, totally acceptable for running any equipment. Again, since it's a Yanmar-based engine, all the components on the engine are all Yanmar part numbers. Uh, when you buy a generator from us, it comes with the parts book, it has the Yanmar part numbers, and it has the DTE part numbers for all the other components. There's a simple oil drain set up on the Yanmar unit, follow all the instructions in that for the type of oil based on the condition. Uh, one of the questions uh, when, we're, when we're selling these units is the, um, the exhaust size and the connection size. In the manual, in the operator's manual, it'll give you all the dimensions of the, the fuel lines, the exhaust system, and the water lines to bring into the engine. So if your customer has a question on how to install it, you know, the best thing to do is just send them the manual, let them figure out if they have the right connections or not, and there's certainly adapters available on the market. They can bring it up, to the, or, up or down to the size they need on this. And one of the most important things on this, these units is following the exhaust system. The manuals will tell you how to do it. 